Well, now it's finally that time to do a Phantom video. I know you guys have been wanting this video for a while, even though I did a 12 second instead of doing a Phantom second. I had it ready and I didn't have Phantom ready. So now that I have Phantom nice and ready, here we go. So hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, let's get into it. So first, Phantom is the second Scion class to be coming in December this year. Again, I have no word of a 12. I don't think anyone does at this point in time, maybe in December, because according to the roadmap, they said episode six, part one. So I don't know. So anyway, we're going to get into Phantom right now. Um, Phantom is a class that uses assault rifles, katana, and rods. So for this one, I'm going to go ahead and just show you the weapons I use. I use the same units from Hero because I use the katana a lot, but I will showcase the weapons, of course, in just a little bit. So just to show you my weapons here, got my rifle here, and then got my katana here, and then I have my rod here. Now, interesting enough for Phantom using rod, um, it's actually a good idea to use two rods. One just for using PAs, and then maybe one for using an element of your choice. You don't have to have a full palette like if you're using Forest. You could just pick one element that you like the most and use it. So in this instance, I'm using Ice, but looking for a second one. But that's okay. So now I'm going to go over real quick, um, just the units again from my Hero video. I'm using the same units, because like I said, I use Katanas the most on this, on my Phantom even though I use all three of my weapons. So we'll go ahead and look at the skills. Now the skills have weird names, so I'm gonna try my best to pronounce them. So we're gonna head over here. Now, I told you they have weird names. <laughs> so if I butcher any of these, cause they look really German and I'm not really good at that. So Schick Myrtling, whatever, I think I did that right. And then you have Folter Ziet, you have Woken Kratzer, and Rose Schwartz. And those are your four katanas. Man, this is really bad. <laughs> so for your rifle, you have Kegelstrom, Notch, Notch and Griff, man, Ferber's Chin, and Straff. I hope I'm pronouncing these right. If someone knows how to pronounce them, good for you, because this is really difficult. And with all the rifle ones, they deal with like the bits and stuff again, which I'll show in a little bit. And then for the rod PAs, and yeah, they don't get any easier. So, Rough Concert, Vulcan Mord, Schwartz Cats, and Eisel Fugel. Man, <laughs> just yeah, it's, it's difficult enough just trying to pronounce all these, but ugh. anyway. That's the PAs, and of course I'll show them in action. I'm gonna change a few of the rods because I only use really one, but I'll use all four because you know what the techniques look, look like, but I will use a technique on there just in case, so I'll probably bring a second rod for part two of this video. So now I'm gonna go ahead and showcase the Phantom skill that. tree, which is actually a pretty nice little skill tree for Phantom. So for your first one will be your Phantom Mark. So what Phantom Mark does is if you hit an enemy continually one part they'll be marked if you continue to hit them there they'll get marked a second stage and if you use your weapon action again if you're a controller uh right bumper or if you're on mouse and keyboard either your right click or whatever you have assigned to it they'll detonate do aoe damage and you restore pp so nice little move of course i'll show you how that goes and then you have all of these skills you learn from level one so there's no using points for them. And this is pretty much, you move faster when you're charging technique, and then you become stealth while you're casting technique for a couple of seconds, and then your movement speed increases. And of course you can charge your techniques with throwing talents from your rod. And then for your other skills, you have double shot counter, well dodge counter shot. When you avoid attacks with, with um, Phantom, kind of like with Hero if you dodge, or with Atoll if you block, if you dodge, you hear a noise, and then you store a bullet, and when you shoot, use a PA or use a tech, you shoot off all these bullets at the enemy. And this one, if you dodge, you gain more PP back. And then Phantom Time, which is the Phantom's unique ability, so when you're attacking, you'll gain gear up, and then this will you know, reduce PP consumption, 
um, and extends your invincibility step. So when you're stepping, it'll last a little bit longer. Don't know the time how long it lasts. And then if you use it again, when you learn the skill, you do whatever skill based on the weapon. Again, just like Hero. And then of course you have the Phantom Time Mark Boost, which actually makes the mark accumulate more when you're in Phantom Time. And I haven't learned this yet, but I'll get into real, real quick about this skill. So it, it'll inflict Jelen when an attack hits during Phantom Time. So if you're unfamiliar with Jelen, Jelen is the opposite of Shifta. Drops your attack. They don't have Zalore, which drops defense. But of course, with Phantom, if you're attacking enemies consistently, you may apply Jelen to them, which is really cool. And then Jelen Redress re reapplies Jelen on the enemy by attacking with the Phantom weapon. So you could be applying a lot of Jelen on an enemy, just making them really weak. And then this skill right here is pretty damn cool. So it's actually just a weapon bonus to how much damage you do with the Phantom weapons, plus 65%. Same thing with part two. So rank 10, that's 65%. That's a lot of damage for just your skill. And of course down here, uh, your different ranges for getting your gauge for your marker, for close range, long range, and then a marker accumulation when you attack an enemy that either has a status ailment, weak bullet, or gelin. Or of course weak bullet in NA is called blight rounds. And then Lord of Thorn decreases marker accumulation rate, but makes the detonation power, like power harder, which I'm not using at the moment. And then you have Mark PP Drain, which actually recovers PP the more you have, um, the amount of markers you have. So pretty much apply more markers to the same enemy, gain more PP back. And then this is the same one set for healing HP, uh, quick cut. You use katana action during the special six time, normal attack or PA increases speed. So it'll make your PAs for your katanas go by faster. Bullseye, of course, using rifle, markers are accumulated by the marker detonation, which is nice when you're exploding enemies and you can get your marker up pretty fast. And then Abilefence, I think I said that wrong. Actually, no, I'm pretty sure I said that wrong. <laughs> when you're using a rod, you can accumulate gear if you're using tax. Another nice little skill there. And then grants a bonus damage to player and pet damage. So I guess if you wanted to sub fandom with your summoner, yeah, there you go. Photon stream. This is a nice skill if you have a lot of PP because it actually bank, it'll actually increase the damage depending on your maximum PP. And as you can see, the conversion rate, 5% with a max bonus of 10%. So it's a nice little bonus there. And then the critical stream, it's the same thing but with critical hits, uh, phantom PP restore, kind of like the Tekker's ability to um, naturally recover PP, and then it recovers PP more when you attack as well, and then decreases the time to take to um, cast techs, gain a bonus on gear generation, and then lastly PP high up, which is sharply increased snag PP, which is pretty nice on level 10. Yeah, 20 PP, it's not bad at all. So yeah, that's it for Phantom Skills. Now it doesn't like they get a lot of skills, but when you see them in combat, it's pretty cool. So with that, let's go see them in combat, shall we? I'll see you guys over. All right, so now on to combat. So much like a twall, Phantom did start the whole shift PA things where if you hit your right bumper like I'm doing right now, you see that white little circle right there. If you use a standard PA, like that, and then you shift it, turn something totally different. So I'll shift it and show this one again. Alternatively, if you have this ring right here, which is the Phantom Step Shift, it'll actually go in place with the right bumper. All you have to do is do a Phantom Step. And then there you go. Also, with this PA, you can tap and hold and just hold this down and then get released for the rest of it. Of course, right bumper by itself is just your bits. And you have your other PA right here. And then if you shift it, you do you could run actually while you still have PP and then release for a double shot really handy as a movement type deal 
And of course, you have this is probably one of my favorite PAs. And of course, when you shift, and that'll continu continuously shoot. And this one here, which you actually plant it on the enemy and it explodes, or if you shift it, turns into a mine, which will just stay there until either expires by an enemy, or if you switch your weapons like to your katana. And there you go. So now for a phantom's regular hit, actually no, I forgot to do rifle's regular hit. So rifle standard shot if you're used to ranger. Uh, this is how phantoms shoot. An interesting, interesting thing about phantoms regular shooting is that it's AOE. So you can hit enemies either in a line or right next to them. So keep that in mind when you're engaging enemies. And of course with the katana. And of course you have the shift action. And you notice that at the end of my attack right here, if you hit it right at the end, it's reminiscent of a twall. A twall is golden and of course with phantoms being dark. And of course we'll start shifting PA so this is the standard. And if we shift. And then standard. And shift. And then standard. And the shift. And then this one's probably one of my favorite ones, so standard. And then shift. So that was rather cool. Now I do have two rods equipped, so we'll go ahead and switch to the first one. For this one, I just do standard attacks. And this is actually a rod shot for gathering more, for gathering more PP. And of course for shifting, but since I use text. And if you're close to an enemy, that actually turns to a hit as well. So getting close. But if you're used to using text, you pretty much know how they go. So we just switch to the weapon part. You have your standard, of course. And then shift. And then standard. And then shift. There's a nice little lingering effect. And of course my PP is low. So standard. Which actually is just a kind of a getaway from an enemy. And then shift. That one, of course, as you can see, closes the gap. Standard. And then shift. So yeah, that is Rod. So now, we'll go ahead and switch back to Rifle. And then we'll, you know, pour Rock Bear, right? So now I'm going to show you Phantom Marker, so just keep your eye on the Rock Bear. So as you can see, there's a marker that's gathered on them right now. And continual hits get you stage two. And of course, I forgot to switch it to free. So let me do that real quick. I apologize for that. Here we go. Alright, let's try it again. And as you can see, doing regular attacks also applies gelling. And just be wary, you can hit other body parts and it'll move the marker. But as you can see, the marker is getting bigger. And there you go. So that'll do explosion if you get stage 2. So try to do stage 2 as much as you can, even though enemies will probably die before you can get stage 2. Okay, so now we go with the PAs. So for the first one, you do have to be kind of close. And then, since I have the ring, I'm just gonna use Phantom Evade and do it that way.
See, this is very reminiscent of Heroes, TMGs. There you go. So always remember to explode your phantom marker, and if you get the right skills, you can just have a leftover mark on them. And then we'll switch up, so we use this one. And then we shift it. Of course, that's just a kind of a gap closer. As you can see, it's it's just continuously hitting him. You see, he throws a bomb on them, and that'll keep hitting them as well. And the bits is just gonna keep shooting him. And if you shift it, just wait for him to get close, and then he'll step into that field that just accidentally deleted. There we go. Okay, we're just gonna flip into it. But yeah, it'll just cause some damage. Not the best skill to use, but nice crowd control. So we'll get to Katana next. Now don't forget you can shift and then use your ring of course. But yeah, I like using katana, especially on bosses and stuff. I also want to show you how to how it is when you counter. No matter what weapon you're using, you fire off bullets. Of course, I wasn't close enough for the counter, so that's okay. See, there's the cannon right there, so you can see their cannon can do a lot of damage. Alright, so that's it for Katana. So now we'll switch to the weapon actions of um, PAs for Wand and I mean, Rod instead of using Tex. And there you go, so, yeah, Rods is actually a really fun weapon if you use it, especially for crowd control situations. All 
All right, so we'll end off using Phantom Time. So I'll just use my rifle for it. Go ahead, activate it. So it's very reminiscent of Hero Time, except you use way less PP. And of course, you finish that off. And of course, a good video wouldn't end without a Dark Blast, so we use a Princess. There you go. Hope you guys enjoyed the video for that one. Um, if you have any questions about the Sasayan classes, successor classes, whatever ones you want to call them, um, leave the comments down below. And if you want to see me do more videos on the Sasayan classes in action, uh, leave them down below, though I'll do them anyway. So again, guys, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Peace.